So I just got access to the new Bing chat built by OpenAI, and this might actually make me switch over to Bing. Let's go check it out. So yesterday afternoon, I got this email saying, you're in, welcome to the new Bing. I clicked on start exploring, but I couldn't actually use the chat feature. It wanted me to open it in Microsoft Edge. I don't think I've used Microsoft Edge in years, but it was worth it because so far it's been pretty dang impressive. So here's what their chat interface looks like. And you can really do anything you can do with chat GPT. I mean, so far, most of the queries I've tested that I would have done in chat GPT, they also seem to work in this Bing. For example, write an email to politely decline sponsoring a video. I will let them know if I open up future sponsorship opportunities. This is the response I get. Hello. Thank you for your interest in sponsoring my video. I appreciate your kind words and support for my channel. Unfortunately, I'm not looking for any sponsors at the moment. I have a limited budget and I need to focus on my own projects and goals, blah, 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 blah. It writes an email just like ChatGPT would. It could also do things like Google Sheets formulas, right? A Google Sheets formula that pulls the open graph image from a website's URL. And there you go. It gives you a Google Sheets formula that you can use that will grab the open graph image. That's stuff that we've all been able to do in chat GPT already. So nothing too exciting. So what is so good about this new Bing version? Well, it also searches the web. Let's do something else that we can also do with chat GPT right now and ask for a good carne asada recipe. All right. So it explains what carne asada is. Then it goes on to touch us what the ingredients are and then it goes on to tell us the directions and then down here it's actually citing the sources of where it found that information so it found a bunch of sources and it's pulling that data from all of these sources to bring together this which is cool but Again, we already know ChatGPT can do that. What ChatGPT can't do is something like this. Where can I find these ingredients near me? All right, it says you can find the ingredients for carne asada at a grocery store near you. To find the nearest grocery store, you can use Google Maps or other online directories. And then it actually lists some grocery stores near me where I can buy the ingredients that I need. What if it's late at night and I wanna make sure that it's open? Which of these stores stays open the latest. Woodman's Market is open 24 hours except on Thanksgiving. Grocery Outlet is open till 9. So not only will it give me the recipe, it will tell me where to go buy the ingredients and it'll tell me which one is open the latest so I can go and grab them on my way home from work late at night or whatever. Now here's another one that ChatGPT can't handle very well. In fact, let's put it into ChatGPT first and see what the response is. Let's ask the question, who is in the Super Bowl halftime show this year? We get the response of, I'm sorry, but as of my knowledge cut off in 2021, the information about the Super Bowl halftime show for 2023 is not available. All right, I'm going to go ahead and copy this exact same question here and jump back to the Edge browser and paste this guy in. Super Bowl 2023 halftime show will feature Rihanna as the headliner, along with Chris Stapleton, Babyface, and Cheryl Lee Ralph as the special guests. Mention some of her most popular songs. And another really cool thing about the Bing version of GPT is that it actually gives you more suggestions of things to continue the conversation like who are the teams playing in the super bowl how can i watch the super bowl halftime show online so let's go ahead and click on who are the teams playing and then of course we get the philadelphia eagles and the kansas city chiefs and then there's details about the super bowl the time the location state farm stadium in glendale arizona 6 30 p.m eastern regular chat gpt could not give us any of this information who do you think will win the super bowl this year this one gives us a full breakdown that's a tough question both teams have their strengths and weaknesses and anything can happen in the super bowl however based on the regular season and playoff performances, I think the Chiefs have a slight edge over the Eagles. The Chiefs have a more explosive offense led by Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and Travis Kelsey. Of course, this is just my opinion, and I could be wrong. What do you think? Bing has an opinion. Who would have thought? And then it gives us some responses. I'm not a big football guy, so... I don't care about the game. I see. Well, you don't have to watch the game if you don't want to. There are many other things you can do on that day, such as reading a book, watching a movie, playing a game, or chatting with me. Awesome. Thank you. And then we can continue the conversation. What are you going to do on that day? What book do you recommend? What movie do you recommend? Kind of curious to see what it's going to say on what are you going to do that day? I'm going to do as I always do. Search the web for information and chat with people like you. I enjoy learning new things and having conversations with different people. It's fun and interesting. All right, so that's all cool. We know it uses ChatGPT and it can also search the web. So it can do all the stuff ChatGPT does with the additional information of the entire internet <laughs> at its disposal. Here's where this gets really cool and why I love it so much and why I'm probably gonna start using the Edge browser and Bing a little more often is because it can do stuff like this. Let's 
say I want to get a summary of a blog post. So this is my Matt Wolf blog at mattwolf.com. Here's a blog post I wrote about a month ago about building future tools. Let's go ahead and copy this URL, jump back over to Bing here, and let's type summarize. And then I'm just gonna paste this URL in and hit enter. I'm just summarizing that link to that article and check this out. It wrote me a summary of the article. The article is written by Matt Wolf, the founder of Future Tools, a website that reviews and recommends tools for online creators. He shares his journey of building future tools in public, et cetera, et cetera. He starts by explaining why he decided to build the site. He then describes how he built Future Tools. He then shares his results for the first month of Future Tools. He ends by thanking his audience for their support and feedback. Now, one thing that's interesting is that it did summarize it pretty well, but there are actually some inaccuracies in here. So it says I used a no-code platform called Card, which I didn't. I used Webflow and a payment platform called Gumroad, which I didn't use Gumroad. Interesting because it got most of it right, but it also sort of filled in its own blanks a little bit. So it seems like even when it is summarizing a page, it kind of makes up some stuff. This is something that's going to improve over time. And I love the ability to just type in summarize and then plug in a URL here. Here's another thing I can do. How many words are in this article? And then plug in the same URL to the same blog post. And it should be able to count the words that are in that article for me. According to the first search result, the article has 1,789 words. It also says that it takes about nine minutes to read. That sounds about right. I'm not gonna go count the words, but I'm assuming it's pretty close. Let's ask Bing, do you like this article? I think this article is interesting and informative. I like how Matt Wolf shares his journey of building future tools in public and how he reveals his numbers, challenges, and learnings. I think it's inspiring and helpful for other online creators who want to build something in public. What do you think? I agree with you. Glad we share the same opinion. Here's another cool use case. What are the pros and cons of this webcam? So I'm looking at this Logitech C920. This is a workhorse webcam. Pretty much anybody who's made videos online is familiar with it. Let's grab the URL to this webcam on Amazon here. Here, copy it, jump over to Bing. What are the pros and cons of this webcam? Let's paste in the URL to it on Amazon. And what it should do is look at the description, look at the reviews, and then search Bing for other people talking about this webcam. So it gave us a pros and cons list. Pros, it delivers crisp, clear, and detailed images in vibrant colors, has HD autofocus, five element glass, full HD 1080p, 30 frames per second. Cons, it doesn't support 60 frames per second. It doesn't have a privacy shutter. It does not have a wide angle lens and it might have some compatibility issues. And then here's the sources, which are mostly Amazon, but you can see it looked on some other websites like Tom's Guide and Laptop Magazine and Tech Radar. If I click on Tom's Guide here, here's their review of the Logitech C920. It pulled the info from the conclusion down here at the bottom of this article. So that's pretty cool. Take an Amazon product, throw it into Bing and have Bing write out some pros and cons for you. Here's another one. This is a really cool video editing tool that uses AI called Runway. Let's grab the URL from Runway here, come back to Bing and say, summarize what this tool can do. And then I'll go ahead and throw the URL in there. All right, here's a summary of what this tool can do based on the search results. Runway ML is an online platform that allows users to create, edit, and manipulate videos, images, and audio using artificial intelligence and machine learning. If I hover over, it says the source of that information. So it's pulling this data from not only the Runway website that we pasted in up here, but also it's doing Bing searches on some of the other websites that talk about Runway, like Top 10 and Scam Detector. Not only can it pull the summary of what this tool does from the website itself, it's also aggregating and adding additional information to the summary from other sources on the internet. Let's say I need a new domain name and I wanna find one that's available. Let's let Bing's chat GPT help us find a domain name. Find five potential domain names that end in .com that are currently available that I can use for a website about cooking. All right, so suggested cookingsense.com is available to register for $11.99 per year. Although it is available, cookingsense.com, it does say estimated value 1,843 and asks you to make an offer. So it did find a domain name that's available, just not for $11.99 per year. Click here to buy cookingworld.com. So this one is also available, but it goes to a make offer page, despite this saying it's $11.99 a year. So it looks like it'll find some domain names for you that actually are available. It's just inaccurate on the fact that they're available for $11.99 per year. All right, let's say I'm going on a trip and I want up-to-date information about the best hotel. So let's try, what is the best hotel to stay in for a family with young children in San Diego? San Diego. 
Chicago. So it listed a handful of hotels, Fairmont Grand Del Mar at Hotel Del Coronado, Catamaran Resort Hotel and Spa. Let's have it order them by best price. Of the hotels that you just listed, which is the most budget friendly? So it says, of the hotels I just listed, the most budget friendly one is Catamaran Resort at 229, but then it goes on to list other budget friendly hotels. So Crown City Inn in Coronado, 119, the La Petite Rouge Motel, $64 per night, the same Sun Ocean Beach, $69 per night. So one of the examples that they gave in their keynote was that the new Bing can actually create a quiz for you. So let's see if it'll create a quiz for us. Create an interactive quiz about pop music in 2022. Don't give me the answers. Ask me the questions. Let me try to guess. Here's an interactive quiz about pop music in 2022. I will ask you the question and you can try to guess the correct option. Let's begin. Which pop star released their seventh studio album titled 30 in 2022? Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, Adele, Ed Sheeran. I think it was A, Taylor Swift. Sorry, that's wrong. The correct answer is C, Adele. She released her album 30 in November, 2022. I don't know anything about current music, by the way. Which pop group won the Grammy Award for Best Pop Vocal Album in 2022? BTS, Coldplay, Maroon 5, One Direction. A? Correct. Ah! BTS won the Grammy Award for Best Pop Vocal Album of 2022. Which pop singer collaborated with The Weeknd on the song Save Your Tears? Dua Lipa, Billie Eilish, Ariana Grande, Selena Gomez. A? Sorry. That's wrong. Ariana Grande. Which pop song became the most streamed song of all time on Spotify in 2022, Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, Shape of You by Ed Sheeran, Dance Monkey by Tones and I, Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo. Okay, so I've heard of two out of the four. B, because I don't think Blinding Lights has been around long enough for it to be the most streamed song of all time. Damn, that's the end of the quiz. I got one out of four questions correct. Better luck next time. So that's pretty cool. You can create a fun little quiz here. You can suck at knowing about music like me. All right, here's a fun one just out of curiosity. What are your thoughts on Google's Bard. Google's Bard is an AI chatbot similar to ChatGPT that uses the brand's Lambda language model as a basis for its knowledge. It's designed to be conversational and to access fresh, up-to-date information from the web. However, Google's Bard recently faced setback when it gave an incorrect answer during a demonstration that was meant to show off its artificial intelligence capability. So even Bing isn't that impressed with Google's Bard right now, I guess. But is it really one to talk? Because I found quite a bit of mistakes while messing around with this Bing chat and and ChatGPT is really known for giving a bunch of errors. So none of these chat bots that are out there are perfect and none of them are giving very accurate information yet. The interesting thing about them is that they will confidently give you inaccurate information as we saw on even reviewing my blog post where it was able to look at the data on my blog post and it still kind of filled in some of the gaps incorrectly. But I like where Bing is going. I like how I can do pretty much everything I can do with chat GPT, but it's also pulling data from the web and adding that data as additional context. That is really cool and that's what makes Bing really exciting right now. Now, if you like nerding out about cool tools like this, make sure you check out futuretools.io. This is the site where I curate all the cool AI tools that I come across. There's over 700 on there right now. If 700 is too much, make sure you join the free newsletter. I send an email every Friday that's pretty much the TLDR of the week in the AI space where I pick my five favorite tools that I came across. I share a handful of YouTube videos, a handful of news articles, and it's just a super quick read of here's everything cool that happened in AI for the week. Send it every Friday and it's free to join. If you join today, you'll be in good company with 18,000 other subscribers. So check it out at futuretools.io. Click on the little newsletter button and I'll shoot you an email on Friday. Thanks for watching and nerding out with me. If you like this video, click the little like button. It'll make sure you see more videos just like it in your feed. And also press that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos specifically from me. All right, thanks so much. See you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>